What's up everybody, TCM here back with another video. And today's video is actually a video that is going to be in my OSINT course that is going to be released this month. The video is on creating sock puppets, which I thought is an important part of OSINT and OSINT investigations. And I thought it was pretty relevant for YouTube and something that could go on YouTube regardless if it was in a course. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please hit like, subscribe, comment down below. You already know the drill. So here we go. Okay, now let's talk about creating sock puppets. What I want to introduce you to are a few different blog posts, and I'm going to link these down below. These were essential for me when I was learning about sock puppets and why they were important and the differences between types of sock puppets and all that. This is extra homework if you would say. Okay, the first one is from Jake Kreps. I think he does a very good uh, blog on how to create sock puppets. Um, the methodology is pretty straightforward, and there's some things that I really kind of want to point out. Um, skipping over the methodology, he kind of talks about the different types of sock puppets that you could have. So saying right here, he's talking about there's two different types of sock puppets. You could have a sock puppet that is a full-on, you go all of the way to make sure that you have uh, this person that you create or this persona that you create that is fake. They have that history we're talked about in the past, and it takes a lot of time. Now, your sock could be uh, identified. Uh, there are There's what's called sock hunters. They could easily uh, pick up on you and say, hey, this person's a sock. Let's just, uh, you know, acknowledge this account as a sock. And then your whole persona is gone. You have to start all the way over again. OK, another thing that he points out is there is something else. There's actually known sock accounts. He points out a really good one that I've known about for some a while here is Shakira Security, right? Um, Shakira Security is not Shakira, right? But it is an account that has 2,500 followers. It's somebody that posts relevant information and they are respected in the community, but nobody knows who they are. They're obviously, they know that this person is not Shakira. Uh, they know that this person is a fake personality, but they're still respected. So there's a couple ways that you could take the sock accounts. For this purpose and what we're doing, this is for investigative purposes. So we're creating a persona, but you could still have uh, this kind of secondary option where it's an account that you can still relate to OSINT. It doesn't have to tie to you. There's quite a few people in the industry that have these sorts of accounts that are very popular and you have no idea who's behind the account. So something to think about. But for the sake of creating an actual sock puppet, we're going to kind of take option one and go through it. I think this is a fantastic read. I think it's really good to point out. He kind of goes through his steps and what he would do. I think it's great. I'm going to link that. Same thing with this. Another article on how to create a sock puppet, what a sock puppet is. I think it's important. I'm providing my methodology and what steps I would take. I think it's important to understand other people's methodology, what steps they might take, what they might do in their process and their thoughts through it. OK, this is very beginner OSINT. I'm not trying to take you down the depth of the rabbit hole that could be a sock puppet. I kind of want you to understand the general basics, why they're created, why how we can do it and kind of go from there. So there's also this great Reddit post here. Uh, let's block these notifications that goes on and just says, here's his process for creating a, an account. And I found this uh, about a year ago and I thought, you know, this is perfect. This is something that is absolutely in my wheelhouse. So what I want to show you is kind of what it is, why he walks through it this way. We're also just going to kind of generate some random stuff, figure this out on our own. And then we'll kind of go back to his details and I'll explain some of this because we're not going to go out and buy a SIM card. We're not going to go out and buy a phone. But there is importance to this. So I think that you should read this. I think that you should understand what the next steps would be if you were doing these things and how you can take this even further. But we'll kind of talk about creating our identity first and then we'll come back to a thought like this. OK, so the first thing that we're going to do is if you look below the video, there is a fake name generator dot com. You can click that link. You can also just type this into a browser and we're going to generate a random person. Now, you could come in here. You could say my person is random. You could be a male. We could be a female. Um, we could say, you know, we are American from the United States, blah, blah, blah. We can set different types. So for the United States, we have American or it says American and Hispanic. But here we are American. Um, and there there's thought here, too. 
Um, one of these articles, if you take the Art of the Sock article here, talks about the benefit of being a female because men, let's face it, are gullible, especially when there's a female around. There, Many of the great OSINT and social engineers are women. They're great at it. And I feel like men, we are. We're vulnerable. Um, so having a woman personality, regardless if you're a man or a woman, could be a good idea. Um, again, these articles go into the reasoning and the why, and I think they're great. So, But here, let's just say we generate somebody at random, shows up to be this Roger T. Davis. You get all kinds of great information here. You can get uh, a fake mother's maiden name, social security number, coordinates, uh, phone number, birthday. Let me make this bigger just so everybody can for sure see it. You can have a fake email address, um, all different sorts of stuff here, right? Passwords, whatever you want. Um, I think this is really great. It's great for just kind of getting some ideas and maybe tailoring this person to who you want to be. So let's say we have a Roger. Say we come up with Roger. Roger's going to be our personality and what we're going to do. So we could take Roger and we can go and maybe create a picture for him. Um, there's a great website here that is this person does not exist. So you can see here that this person, there's a person here, but this is completely AI generated. Okay, so let's refresh this until we maybe get somebody that we feel like might be a Roger. Uh, so we got this guy. Maybe this guy could be it. Uh, we do have an age on our persona. It doesn't really matter. Okay, 64 years old. Obviously, this isn't going to be him, but we don't have to keep the age or date. Okay, it could be a younger Roger if we want. Um, and then we could take this picture. And the nice thing about this picture is if you were to put this, which we haven't covered it yet in the course, but if you were to put this in a Google reverse image search, or you were to put this in like a 10 eye or a Yandex, this image does is not going to come back. This person doesn't exist. Um, we have seen failures in the past of where sock puppet accounts or fake accounts use somebody else's photograph, right? We've all, all heard of that. Uh, when we talk about like online dating, we've heard of the term catfish, right? Uh, catfish being somebody using fake photos to catfish other people or act like they're not. You can think of it the same way. Uh, a lot of those people have been busted. And if you watch the show on MTV, which is actually called Catfish, you will see that they go and they actually take the images that people have been sent and they put them through a reverse image search to see if those have been found. A lot of times they'll pick up fake accounts or fake people because they'll tie to other users. And that's exactly what you don't want to have happen. Again, remember, if you put in a lot of effort into your sock account, you don't want your sock account to get immediately busted by having a fake or reverse image search identifying you as somebody else or a fake person. So this is a great idea to come in here and have an image, fake persona, et cetera. This person does not exist. Once you do that, it is recommended that you get things or start tying this person to uh, accounts that do not tie back to you whatsoever. That could mean using a laptop that you would use specifically for your investigations that does not have any, you would never log into your personal Twitter, your personal Facebook, whatever accounts you have, you would never log in on that account. It would never tie to you. Okay. Um, that could mean also going out and getting a burner phone. A lot of people in OSINT recommend having a burner phone if you're doing investigations. Now, this course isn't related specifically to investigations as stated earlier. I'm not an investigator, though I have done some investigation work. This is just a broad view of OSINT as a whole. There are much deeper topics on this subject. But what we can do is say we want to go out and buy a cell phone. We can have this privacy.com credit card. Okay, we can go buy a burner phone. We can use a credit card like this. And if you were to log in or sign up to create an account here, what you can see behind the scenes is that you have the ability to create credit cards. Let me actually bring this up. Okay, so here's an account I created. And what we have here is the ability to fund this card, okay? And then you have a virtual credit card. And you can have as many virtual credit cards as you want. This gives you the ability to have a spending limit, to have, say, like there's a subscription you want to try out for $9.99, just as an example. And you only want to try it out for a month. We're so terrible with subscriptions sometimes. We just let them go. I've got an Audible subscription that I have just let sit and charge me $15 a month for the last five months now that I still need to cancel. This will be a great alternative. You use a virtual card. It goes to charge you the second month. It doesn't work. You have your uh, a card that doesn't tie to your name or your identity or anything else. It's all virtual. This is perfect. So say you want to buy a burner phone. Say you want to buy 
uh, a SIM card for that burner phone. Now you'll see that people recommend Mint. You can use a Mint SIM to use in your phone. You can get it off Amazon and you could take that path. And this is exactly what this person recommends here, right? They recommend using a Mint Mobile setup. They're fairly cheap. They said it's five bucks on Amazon to get two SIM cards. You can use your phone then to go and use it as a phone verification method. So if we think about like Facebook or sometimes Twitter, any of those things, you're gonna wanna set up either verification or two-factor or whatever. And the goal here is to use these accounts to actually, uh, or use this phone to actually sign up for it. As soon as you're done signing up, you change those over to something that you control, like a Google Voice account, and then you, you get rid of the SIM card, you never have access to that SIM card again, destroyed, nothing is related to you. Okay, again, highly recommend reading this, but the idea here is that you create things that don't tie back to you. So with that being said, the other thing that's important to talk about are IP addresses. Ideally, you do not want to do this on your own IP address, okay? You do not want this to tie back to you. When you're creating these accounts, you don't want to tie back to you. You could, in theory, use a VPN. Uh, the VPN, the issue with VPNs is places like Facebook and other sites might pick it up that you're on a VPN, want additional verification, and then you're kind of SOL if you can't provide that because you have a fake account. So you need to be cautious about using VPNs. Try to identify VPNs that maybe would work if you're trying to create a full SOC account. Ideally, it should be in the location that you're trying to do it in. So if you're doing a, say you're in St. Louis, Missouri in the United States. If you're in St. Louis, you're saying your character's from St. Louis, then you should ideally use a VPN that can get you into St. Louis and create those accounts so that you look like you are coming from where you are. Same thing with the phone number. You should try to get a phone number out of St. Louis. Make your persona as legitimate as possible. Okay, now mobile networks work really great. You don't have to be on uh, your home network. You can be on a mobile if you can't use a VPN or if that's getting picked up. So just think about things, try to create them through. Now what I want you to do is I want you to practice. I want you to follow this setup as best as you can. Don't go buy a burner phone. Don't go do any of that unless you absolutely want to practice this full fledged. Again, we're not going into the weeds in this course. We're scratching the surface. If this interests you, then dig deeper, go further. I fully encourage it. But for right now, just go create a fake persona, come into the random name generator, create a fake persona, create a fake picture, make an account, make a Twitter, make a Facebook, make anything that you would want. Don't worry so much about the IP address. Don't worry so much about the phone number. I will tell you, this is from personal experience. The very first sock puppet account that I created, I used it on Facebook, okay? This is a life lesson. I used it on Facebook. I used it on Facebook and then I never had any issues with it until the day that I logged into Facebook with my phone. Immediately, it started pulling down contacts and people who I may know and that ties me immediately to those other people from my phone, okay? And guess what happens on the other side? People that I know or may know are seeing me pop up as who they may know. And this person doesn't exist, obviously, but why am I showing up? So you need to be very cautious about not logging in with your phone, not logging in anywhere that is not tied to you. Don't search people on your sock Facebook account um, if you don't need to. Don't search people that are related to you or anything. Use a separate account for that even if you have to. But um, think about creating a Twitter, a Facebook, maybe an Instagram, maybe a LinkedIn. You can create these accounts. For the purpose of this course, I'm gonna be straightforward with you. I'm gonna use my own personal accounts. We're gonna do OSINT on my own personal accounts. I'm gonna use my Twitter account when we're doing Twitter. I'm gonna use, um, well, I don't have a Facebook, so I will create a Facebook account, but I'll show you how to search through things using my own stuff. Um, but for the purpose of correct OPSEC, for the purpose of uh, doing this the right way, you should be thinking about the things I'm telling you. Read through these three articles. That is definitely your homework. Read through these three articles. Take time, don't just jump into the next video. Really take time to think about how you create a sock puppet, how you would go about it, and understand why it's important. Okay, understand why it's important. There's more meaning to a sock puppet beyond OSINT investigation. There's more meaning beyond this course. I just want you to understand why we're doing it, what the purpose is, and how you can do it effectively. Okay, so from here, we're gonna go ahead and move on into our actual OSINT stuff. So we're gonna start off with some uh, search engine OSINT, and I'll see you in the next section when we dig into that.